So now I'd like to share a few words uh, for NSW Police, who is committed to helping the community and the international students to have a safe and rewarding experience while living and studying in, uh, in NSW, to engage with the students and provide them friendly opportunities to interact with them and share their <coughs> concerns. And to share a few words with our students, please welcome the Detective Inspector Rod Pistola on the stage. Thank you everybody and thank you for uh, walking in myself and, and my colleagues here uh, tonight to speak to you. I'll just introduce my team. I've got Samantha Forty, who's the Superintendent at Eastern Beaches Police Area Command with me. Also got Sergeant Mitch Owen, who's the Operations Duty Officer from uh, Eastern Beaches Police Area Command. And Naz, uh, Niaz Bian, Ewan, sorry Naz, who's our Crime Prevention Officer from Eastern Beaches. I am um, uh, Rod Pistola, I'm a Detective Inspector at uh, Eastern Beaches. I'm the Crime Manager there. Um, by way of a little bit of background, I've been in the police for the last uh, 31 years, 25 years of those I've been a, uh, a detective. So, the Eastern Beaches uh, Command takes in uh, the University of New South Wales at Kensington, uh, who we work with on a daily basis. Um, and I want to talk to you tonight about how the New South Wales Police can help and support you whilst you're studying uh, in this country. Some of the things I'll touch on, uh, some of you may already know, but I'll go over briefly anyway. Uh, at the end of the, um, the procedure tonight, we're happy to take some questions down the back there if, if you have any. Um, now, there's, there's several ways of reporting crime. Um, as you know, in any emergency, please call triple zero. You can also, uh, in person, uh, report anything at any police station or ring any local police station. We also have the local or the police assistance line, uh, which you can ring up and report uh, crimes of a minor nature. You know, if you've had something you know, stolen from your letterbox or you've, you've lost your wallet or you've had a, uh, a car accident or things like that. We have the New South Wales Police website, which is a community portal that you can also lodge um, reports of minor crime. We have uh, Crime Stoppers as well, which is a, it's almost like a hotline where you can report uh, suspicious activity or illegal activity, and which is something that can also be done uh, anonymously. Um, but all I would ask is that any reports that you do need to make are done in a timely manner uh, with sufficient information so the police can respond uh, to what you were reporting. Things that you probably need to include when you do make a report are your name, your date of birth, your address, your phone number, your email, the university or the place of study that you are currently at. And particularly important are the time, date, place and descriptions of anyone that's involved or the offenders. Um, and we generally run across the 5WH, 5W and H, which is who, what, where, when and how. So if you can remember that, there's generally along the lines of what we're going to ask you uh, in your report of a, of a crime. So the more information that you can tell us, the better, the better, we, uh, better we can respond to your crime. Um, if you are calling triple O in emergency, you will be asked to confirm your location on several occasions. They do that just to clarify some information with you. And you'll also be uh, asked to give a, a cross street if you do know one. Uh, and that just helps our responding police arrive as quickly as they can. And generally in the metropolitan area, you will have uh, in, an, in an emergency a police response within, within minutes. It's a little bit different in rural areas, but generally around the metro area, with the, the amount of resources and, and people in the field that we have, um, it'll be fairly quick. We have uh, interpreters available 24 seven, seven days a week, both in person uh, and on the telephone. So if you feel you require one or you're more comfortable speaking to the police in your, in your native language, then we can arrange it for you. That is no problem at all. Um, so just bear that in mind. If you, if you do need that, that's, that's no problem. Um, I'll touch briefly on some, some crime trends uh, that we have been seeing uh, of late with the, with the reporting and things that are going on, um, not only with COVID, but just across, across the board. But I will say uh, from the outset that New South Wales is a safe city. Uh, you can generally go about your business across the state in a safe and trouble-free way. There are no no-go zones, Not unlike some other parts of the world. Our public transport systems and our entertainment, entertainment precincts are all 
all very good and very safe. The New South Wales Police have uh, in excess of 16,000 sworn members. They are the people that wear the uniforms. There's a lot of other people that work in the background that are civilians and, and help the New South Wales Police in their day-to-day -day activities. Um, unlike some other cultures across the world, all our police are trustworthy. They will not be influenced or coerced by the offer of bribes or money. Uh, there are serious ramifications for us if we do do that. So rest assured that doesn't go on. There are, there are consequences. So, um, stealings and property theft continue to be our most common crime. Uh, the majority of it is opportunistic and relates to high value transportable items um, like phones and laptops and, and things that are easily taken and, and stolen and on sold and that type of thing. Um, my advice to you is uh, beware of your surroundings don't keep the valuable items uh, in plain view. If you're going to leave them in your car um, and they see them, they'll just smash the window at times just to get the, those high valuable items. Um, the same with push bikes and e-bikes. Um, if you're going to lock them to a place, make sure it's a secure place and generally under some CCTV footage if you can. It gives us something to go with if for some reason your bike or um, property is stolen. The other thing I was going to touch on is uh, some scams. Um, generally, they're cold calls over the telephone via the mobile phone, you know, where they demand some money um, in one way, shape or another. They pretend they're from um, a state organisation like the tax office um, or some, something along those lines, a bank. Generally, no government organisation in this state will request anything like that. Uh, if you are suspicious about a scam or a request for money, you need to call us and you need to check the validity of that information. So there is a little bit of that going around and you know, every now and again I do get a call on my own phone just from a, a random number and they're trying to extort money or trying to get you involved in some type of scam to provide money. Um, we have had um, a couple of instances and we call them virtual kidnappings whereby um, someone who is either studying at one of the unis or a student across is threatened into making a short video that is sent back to their relatives at home and this video is then used to extort parents or relatives to providing money online to the scammers um, so it's a sophisticated sort of crime and, it, and it's a fair few levels of uh, it's fair, it's a fair bit of complexity that goes into it but there is just be mindful of that. If you are asked to participate in a video that you think is going to be sent back home to your parents or to extort money, uh, it's a scam. It's They're trying to extort money from people internationally. Now, I don't want to scare anyone with that, but we have had a couple of those over the last 12 months uh, reported through one of the unions. Essentially, if we are called to investigate serious crimes or crimes of a sexual nature that occurred in, in share accommodation or university dorms or on campus, generally that location where the incident uh, occurs will be declared as a crime scene and our forensic police come in and conduct some examinations. So that is just a standard operating procedure that we do. Don't be alarmed if you see uniformed police in, the, in a dorm or a, a university campus or share accommodation. That's Generally, when we get a lot of questions along that wider, you know, we need to come in with police in uniform it's concerning for the students, but that is just part of our process. We need to be able to examine what has happened and how it's happened so we can present it to the courts. Uh, generally speaking, most uh, young people, including international students, get, some in, get themselves in trouble for alcohol-related alcohol crime. Um, being intoxicated uh, either by drugs or alcohol can have some uh, serious implications for you both criminally and socially. Uh, and I'll touch on some of the police powers and the things that we, we can and can't do uh, in a minute. But um, the other thing I might also mention too is uh, if you're considering on the off chance of becoming a food delivery rider, you need to adhere to the road rules. Uh, you cannot ride on the footpath. Uh, you need to obey all local signs and regulations because otherwise heavy fines can apply. Now, the police have certain power, or have, or have the power in certain uh, situations to give directions to intoxicated people in public places and to leave an area for a specified time, generally up to about six hours, if they believe they are likely to cause injury to themselves or another person or damage to property or disorderly. 
So essentially, if you're, if you're drunk on the street and being a nuisance and you're asked to leave by the police uh, or to move along out of the area, it's a very good idea to comply. Otherwise, you can find yourself with a, a $550 ticket or, or a fine. And the same as if you're asked to leave a hotel or a licensed premises if you're drunk or intoxicated and you fail to adhere to that request, you can also be issued with a fine. So the same applies to carrying a knife or a pocket knife in a public place. There's laws in this state that say that you cannot have uh, a knife uh, without a proper excuse, and that includes, as I say, flick knives and pocket knives. Um, a lot of the time we get the excuse that you use it to cut fruit. Um, generally, that's not a reasonable excuse. If you're a chef and you use it for your trade, then perhaps that might be a... But generally speaking, you're not, um, you're not permitted to carry knives on the street in this state. Uh, we as police also have the power to stop and search people if we believe they have anything on them that is stolen, be it a dangerous article, drugs, or anything that may be used in the commission of a crime. Most of our frontline police carry uh, a body-worn video and they'll generally activate it when they speak to people uh, and those interactions are recorded. So any of the conversations and anything that goes on uh, are generally captured by body-worn <coughs> videos. And that again is part of our standard police practice. Uh, there are offences against you being racially abused or vilified. These incidents need to be reported to us so we can act on it. All right? Um, now that I've said all that, let's get everyone. Uh, New South Wales Police are committed to providing professional service to international students. We love and encourage having international students in this country. And I think uh, prior to COVID, we put on an international beach soccer <coughs> tournament that some of you may have played in or some of, some of you know about. And we're going to try and do those things coming up in the future. So we look forward to having you. As I say, we love having international students in this country. We're here to support and work with you. Um, just in closing from me, just if you are out and about, just remain vigilant. Don't become complacent in relation to your property and re in relation to locking doors and windows. Don't put yourself in a position where you could become a victim. We are here to, we are here to support you through your studies. Uh, we're always approachable. Uh, we're always happy to give advice. If you have any doubt about any scams or any calls or anything that just doesn't sit right, generally if it's too good to be true, it is. Come and see us, we're happy to talk to you. Um, now my friends have brought a number of uh, items up the back there. There's some um, cards about how to contact us. There's also some other pens and gifts and other things. So please make yourself um, take some of those on your travels. Um, and we're happy to take some questions after this. If, if you do have any, or I'm happy to take them now if anyone wants to ask any questions, but we will be available after the proceedings tonight if there's anything anyone wants to, to raise with us.